All right, this says selected values for a twice differentiable function f of x continuous on the closed interval negative 3 to 5 is given below along with selected values for f prime and f double prime. The question, the first question says, is it safe to say that f of x is concave up on the interval negative 3 to 5? Why or why not? So generally speaking, your eye might go to the second derivative is a second derivative positive on the interval. And so the answer is we don't really know that for sure. We know it's positive at these selected values, but we don't know whether it's positive the entire on the entire interval. So I would say no, it isn't safe to say that. since um, f double prime could be negative on the interval negative 2 to, um, or negative 3 rather, to 2, for example, or the interval from 2 to 5. Right? It, we have the selected values, but we don't know if it's going to dip down, you know, that one could dip down and, and become a negative number in between negative three and two. So we don't know, we don't have all the full picture. B says, it's a review, explain why there must be a z in between negative three and five, such that f of z equals six. Well, f of negative three, let's write this, f of negative three is, is equal to zero and f of 5 is equal to 7. Okay, and like, so are we looking at a continuous function? Because if we're not, we can't make any conclusion. But this question says that we, I mean, it asserts that it's true. So yeah, f is continuous on negative 3 to 5. So this is the intermediate value theorem. Okay, so I'm going to say, and since um, f, is continuous okay then by the intermediate value theorem okay there must be a z Okay, such that uh, f of z, I'm just kind of restate, I'm kind of parroting back what they said. But the key thing is um, that it's continuous, and therefore the intermediate value theorem applies. Again, review, explain why there must be a w in between negative 3 and 5, such that f prime of w is equal to 7 eighths. <clears throat> so this is now a claim about a derivative, right? That should conjure up the, me the, the mean value theorem. And so what, what's the mean value theorem say again? It says if we're looking on a um, if we're looking at a function that is continuous on a closed interval and differentiable on the open interval, <clears throat> then there's a place where the derivative equals the slope of the secant line that links up the two endpoints. I guarantee that's what's not going to happen here. So let's just restate um, you know the mean value theorem. So I'm going to say since um, f of x is continuous on the interval negative 3 to 5 and differentiable I mean it says it's differentiable on the closed interval but the, the mean value theorem doesn't really require that so if it, I mean if it's continuous if it's differentiable on the closed interval it's also continuous uh, and differentiable on the, the open interval um, then by the mean value theorem um, there exists a w in the interval negative 3 to 5 such that and now I'm just going to compute the slope right I'm going to say such that f of uh, so actually I'll say this such that f prime of w 
is equal to, and now I'm just going to complete, uh, do the slope between the, the two endpoints. So it's um, f of 5 minus f of negative 3 divided by 5 minus negative 3, and that's 7 minus 0 divided by 8, which is 7 eighths. Okay, so that's a good little review. <clears throat> and then lastly, this brings us to like what we're covering now. Does f have a local max, a local min, or neither at x equals 2? So if you're asked a local max or min or neither when you're given a table of values, almost certainly this is a second derivative test question. So what does the second derivative test say? Well, first we need a critical point. So at x equals 2, right, let's go examine the first derivative. Aha! We have a critical point because the derivative is 0. So I'm going to say since f prime of 2 is equal to 0, that means we have a critical point. Now we need to examine the, the sign of the second derivative, which is 4, and that's positive. And now that's enough info to make a, conclu a conclusion. Okay, so I've got that the, I got a critical point, and then the second derivative is positive. So then that implies that um, f has a, so think about it, it's um, the f double prime of 2 being positive means it's essentially concave up. So you got a critical point, concave up, so it has a min, a local min. Okay, and that's by the second derivative test. Okay, that kind of wraps up, I think, um, this, this, uh, this section. <clears throat>